Hey, what's going on, everybody? We're so glad that you're tuned in with us today. You know, I oftentimes say that Jesus Christ is the hope of the world through the local church, right? That's how God mainly works. He works through the, work, the local church. And, you know, we, the local church, then are to be the answer to all things that bring brokenness to this world, right? We are the hands and feet of Christ, the mouthpieces. We are the body of Christ, right? The local church. And so the local church is the answer to then racism. You know, if the church is not functioning in that way, then it's a malfunction. If the church is not functioning in that way, right, to be the answer to racism, then the church is malfunctioning. To malfunction means that it is a breakdown in the way that it should function. It was created to function that way and it is not functioning that way. You know, I like what it says here in Titus 2.11. It says that God has revealed his grace to save the whole human race. It doesn't say a particular human race. It says the whole human race. That means then that in the schools, we should, we should see this to be true, especially those of us that are going to church. That Let me rewind that. Sorry, not going to church. Those of us that are the church. Because when we gather together, listen, that's us, the church congregating. A building is not the church. We, the people, are the church. So that means that when it functions, that it makes a difference in the schools. It makes a difference in the neighborhoods that we're in, in our homes the workplaces, and the community. When we function the way God created us to function, us, the people, being the church, then God can be the answer through his son, Jesus Christ, functions through the local church. I want to look at the word prejudice for a minute. What does prejudice even mean? It means that uh, the word prejudice means a preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. It's a prejudgment. It's a bias. It's a prejudice in favor of or against, it says, one thing, a person or a group compared with another, usually in a way that's considered to be Unfair. So that's being prejudiced, right? You see somebody, and you prejudge them because of how they look, and you already put them in the same category with everybody else. We all do that, don't we, at one point or another? We prejudge people, thinking we can be honest. This ain't just for one group of individuals. This is for all of us. The Word of God is for all of us. And we have to embrace all of it, right? This is not just for a particular group of people. This is for all of us, right? So racism is when, I should say, racism is when you believe that your race is superior over another particular race. Now that we kind of clarified, look at some of these definitions, let's look at why God hates racial prejudice. First of all, being prejudiced, it questions the very creation of God. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 says this, Who says you are better than others? And what do you have that was not given to you by God? And if it was given to you, why do you brag as if you did not receive it as a gift? So prejudice is a sign of ignorance. A lack of knowledge. Proverbs says this, 4-7, getting wisdom is the wisest thing that you can do. 
and whatever else you do. Another translation says, and all you're getting, get understanding. The next scripture that I'm going to share, I want to, I want to, um, talk about for a minute. It's going to be 1 John 2, 11. And before I read that, I want to break this down for a second on the context, what's going on. So in the, in the context of this scripture here, Jerusalem has been destroyed, right? Uh, where all the Christians were at. Uh, Christians were scattered throughout the whole empire at this time. And by the time that John wrote this particular letter, right? This letter to the church. Christianity had faced and survived all the persecution that was going on during that time. And during that time, when we're talking about persecution, we're talking about being tortured and oppressed. Tortured and oppressed. They were being tortured for their faith. Now, the main problem that was com uh, confronting the church at this particular time from this uh, passage we're going to read from the scripture verse was that the people were declining in their commitment to God more and more. And they were committing themselves more and more to the ways of the world and not of God. Now, so in other words, they were failing to stand up for, for Christ and and what it means to be a Christian, and they were bending and folding to all the thoughts and ways of, of the society at that time. So that meant that they were false teachers, and they were rapidly growing from when we look at what's going on during that time. And it was a downward slide for the, for the church at that time uh, because of this. Now, John wrote this letter to put believers back on track, and we're going to see just a, a small piece of this. And he was doing that to show the difference from darkness and light and how we are to be the light in the midst of the darkness. And this is 1 John 2.11, and, and it reads like this. So John, so 1 John 2.11 reads like this. But whoever hates another believer is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, and does not know the way to go because the darkness has brought on blindness. You know, wisdom uh, from God uh, during this time that we're in right now is crucial. It's so crucial. Listen, James 3.17 says, True wisdom from above is pure, peaceful, gentle, friendly, full of compassion, and is free from the prejudice of hypocrisy. True wisdom from above is pure, peaceful, gentle, friendly, full of compassion, and is free from the prejudice of hypocrisy. Friendly. People be hating on being friendly right now, which I understand because I used to be one of them individuals that was not friendly. And no one I hung around was friendly. So I understand about not being friendly. Right now, people make fun of us being friendly and full of compassion for all people and doesn't matter who you are. If there is someone that you don't like, when you're not a person following after God's own heart, it does not make sense to, for anyone to stick up for that person, especially if they've wronged you. All right? But God says we are to be gentle towards one another, uh, have wisdom that is pure because that leads to being peaceful. When you don't have wisdom that's pure, pure wisdom from God, you can't be peaceful, gentle, friendly, full of compassion, or free from being prejudiced or even from being a hypocrite. We end up being hypocrites. We talk about love and, you know, God is love and all this stuff, but until it's inconvenient. When it's inconvenient, we, we stop all that. But no, that's not how we should be. You know, that's what won me over, is God's love. His love has won me over. I knew what it was to hate people, to be violent. I knew all that. I knew what that was. I lived in that world. 
but his love, man, it broke through the walls of all the stuff that I had that was dark and evil. It pierced through all that and it won me over. His love did. I've seen hate to the, the purest of how hate can be. And my first time seeing the purest of what love can be, who is God, because God doesn't have love, God is love. So if you got God, then you have love. If you don't have love, you don't have God. Then you're a hypocrite when you just use it in one way and not the other. Everybody can get this love. Just like the opposite is everybody can get this hate. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what your last name is. Everybody can get it. Well, now it's all about that love. So everybody can get this love. I don't care what you've done or done to me, what you say to me. Now, that don't mean I don't wrestle with it. That don't mean it's not a struggle. But at the end of the day, what I aim for and where I'm going to land at is love. That's it right there. And so that's what we got to do. So prejudice disobeys um, the great commandment, which is this. It says the law... Uh, uh, this is uh, Galatians 5, 14 through 15. It says the entire law is summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if instead of showing love, you attack and tear each other apart, watch out. You will destroy yourselves. Self-destruction. Uh, you're headed for self-destruction. You know? self dest Yeah. Look. You know the vibes. You got to keep this love consistent no matter what happens or doesn't happen. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Huh? That God loves everybody. So for God so loved the world, huh? that he sent his only son, John 3, 16, to die on the cross for our sins. Why? So that we should not perish, but have eternal life. Everybody, the whole world. People you hate, people you don't like, people that do evil. I was one of them. I did evil. There's people that don't like me right now because of stuff that I did or I was a part of. And God says, I matter to him. You matter to God. Whoever you are and everyone else that you may not like, yes, even them. God loves all of us. He has a plan and a purpose for all of us. We were created in his image and in his likeness, man. There's hope for all of us. Especially for when we actually be the church and love other people. Even when it's hard to love them. I mean, the Bible says clearly to love your own enemy. In the Bible, it says love your neighbor. Hmm. Love each other. It's telling the Christians to love each other. Then it says love your neighbor, wherever you may be, whoever your neighbor may be. You love them. Then it even says... Love your enemy, as if that wasn't enough. Love your enemy. Well, let's look at this. At the end of the day, you know, um, the reason for all this is because prejudice is not really personal or spiritual, so it has to, it's a sin, right? Prejudice is a sin, which is God, why God does not like when we are prejudiced regardless of who ends up being prejudiced. James 2.9 says, if you treat people according to their outward appearance, you are guilty of sin. And God's law condemns you as a lawbreaker. I didn't say it. The Bible says it. You may not like what the Bible says. That's between you and God. But for those of us that, those of us that believe, that are believers, this is what it says, man. So this is to challenge every single one of us listening to this right now, man. This is challenge us, man, to move forward despite our struggles, the struggle, whatever's going on. You must love. Racism is then a problem of sin, not one of skin. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against uh, spiritual principalities. It talks about good and evil. And how there's a fight going on spiritually between good, being God, and evil. 
spiritual warfare. Anytime you're upset about how someone is treating, you got to understand this. It's not even them. It's the spirit behind them. Huh? The spirit of evil. So while you're trying to get mad at one person or a tribe of people or a group of people, understand. Please understand this. There's things going on behind the scenes, man, that you got to be aware of and understand. Don't ever take things personal. It never should be personal. God is trying to work through you to them, even them during those times, whatever times you find yourself in. It says in Romans 14, 10, so why do you judge your brother? And why do you think that you are better than he is? We will all stand before God one day and he will judge us all. You know, for those of us that are believers, man, you know what it says about us in the church and this is not the lo just the local church, but all of us church globally, worldwide, right? All of us, they're in the family of God. So you got the, 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 the church, right? All of us, right? And then you got the local church. You got the global church and then you got the local church, right? And so God is talking to us that we have to, we got a lot of work to do and it starts at home. Right? Because we got issues with each other at one point or another. And God says, you got to deal with that. If you can't even deal with that, then you can't deal with anything else. So we must see people as God does then for this, this to happen. First Samuel 16, 7 says this, the second part of the B. It says, the Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. See what I'm saying? Jesus says this, this is the red letters, man, in the Bible. Uh, there's translations that when Jesus speaks, it's in red letters. Look, this is the red letters right here. John 7, 24 says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, stop judging by mere appearance, by mere appearances and make a right judgment. Man, don't, don't be judging people by how they look, man. Give people a chance. We do that. Whether it's somebody that's tattered up Give them a chance, man, just because they look rough, sagging or not sagging, or they just tatted up and look different. Maybe maybe they just from a different culture, and you, you, you know what I'm saying? You're judging them already. Maybe because they got a uniform or not. Whatever that is, you look at them a certain way, right? Whoever you are, right? Maybe they, they're a different skin tone, and you prejudge them because of that. And that goes all the way around. We got biases now, all of us do. And we got to deal with those biases in the heart, man, that we have. Don't nobody should ever come to this like you all that and you, you know what I'm talking about, you the only one that somebody has wronged because you wrong others too. We all have sinned. And if you can't embrace that, then that's why you're in a whole bunch of trouble. Right? And really, that's why a whole bunch of, that's why our world is in a whole bunch of trouble because no one wants to admit their sin, that they come to the table stanky to. That's why Jesus, when those were coming to um, to him with the uh, lady that was caught in adultery, he told them, man, he told them, he said, he said, hey, man, which one of you have never sinned? Go on and cast a stone. Back in the days, they used to kill people by, by stoning them to death, right? And he said, uh, he said, he who has not sinned, cast the first stone. Man, they all took off one by one because they realized, man, all of us have. Well, that's what God is telling us right now, man. Love other people. And if you're letting what people have done to you get in the way of you loving on them, you understand what I'm saying? Gets in the way of you not judging. I mean, look, man, don't judge people just because you don't, uh, they look a certain way or they're from a particular group. Love on them, man. Your stuff stink too. You've done something to somebody else at some point or another. God wants us all to walk in the love that he has. Because the Bible says that you're nothing but a clanging and sin, but you're a bunch of noise if you ain't got love. You can talk about all these spiritual things. If you ain't got no love, you're a bunch of noise. Why? Because he's saying if you ain't got me, if you ain't got him, which God is love, if you ain't got love, then you're a bunch of noise. You're a hypocrite. So we gotta live this stuff, man. We gotta 
We gotta, you know, we can't bend or fold. We gotta, we gotta walk this stuff out. This goes for everybody. I like what it says here in Acts 10, 28. It says, then Peter said to Cornelius's household, you know, Jewish law forbids us from associating with people of another race. But God has shown me that no race is inferior or unclean. You hear that? Look at that scripture, man. It's right there, Acts 10, 28. Huh? God changes the minds and hearts of people that were thinking of another direction in another way, man. Number two, you must listen to, I mean, uh, the next uh, piece here is we must listen to everyone with respect. Everyone, the Bible says, must be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to become angry. Human anger does not achieve God's righteous purpose. That's James 1, uh, 19 through 20. Man, be quick to listen, slow to speak. Don't be so quick to speak in your anger. Listen, it's not talking about when it's easy. It's talking about human anger right here. Do not become angry. These are moments where you should get upset. You have every right to be upset, but God says, listen, as a Christian, you deny them rights. Huh? It's God over everything. Of course, you can lament. You know, which means you can cry out to God. You can you can complain about the stuff that ain't working. People have done that throughout the whole Bible. But when we uh, learn about what happens in the Bible, God says, come to me. If your heart is heavy, if you're burdened, God says, come to me. It's okay to be frustrated, upset, disappointed, ticked off. It's okay. God, just give it to me. I can handle you. I got you. So please don't misunderstand that you're not supposed to be angry and frustrated about whatever happens in this life in what season or the, in one season or the other no 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 that's emotionally unhealthy when you don't process these things right in fact when we go through stuff at at the church and our leadership what we've been learning more and more especially during this time is where we come to one another and and lament which the bible you know, in the Bible, there's a whole book of lamentations. <laughs> People crying out and complaining to God. We come together and complain before one another and, 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 and give it to God. The Bible says if you want to be healed, you confess your sins to one another. Well, we do that here. We understand that, man, because if not, man, woo, we're going to have a lot of poison on the inside, contaminated stuff. There ain't going to be no love, you know. So these things are important. So I say that because we have to be healthy with our Christianity. That doesn't mean we don't acknowledge things or, or listen to things or anything like that, but it does mean that we don't keep that in, right? I mean, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? So, the next thing is to stand up for others. Man, this whole time we've talked about what prejudice is, racism is, how we're supposed to love everybody else. Listen though, the Bible says this, Proverbs 31, 8 through 9. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Endure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless. And see that they get justice. If you are a person of influence, which you, we all are, it's important that you speak up when you see something being wrong when we see people being wronged by others. We are to do this as parents, those of us that are parents, so that our kids can learn from us and they do the same thing. We don't just say, oh, look, that's funny. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's how those people are, wherever those people you're referring to are. Listen to me now, because we all get caught up in this, because we're human. We have biases because of our experiences or the experiences of others or Whatever, right? If your kids are picking this up from you at home, listen. When you apply the principles of God, check this out. They stand up for others in school. Let me tell you something, man. My daughter, my youngest one, man, she stands up for others when she see them being wrong. It don't matter who they are. She'll stand up for them. She's done it at her school in elementary, which was in a whole nother area. 
right? But we're all from the, you know, from, from the hood. And then she's done it at these other schools that she's been at, where ain't nobody too much from the hood there. And she sticks up for other people, man, when people are being treated wrong. Why? Because she sees her daddy doing it. She sees her mom doing it. She sees her, her big brother doing it. This is what we do as a family. It starts at home, man. We don't just talk about our own experiences and judge people because of our own experience and, and not love. No, we don't have that luxury. You know what I'm saying? To be on some hypocritical stuff. We gotta be consistent with this love and that everybody can get this love. And we gotta do that and display that for our family, for the people that we have influence over. And it may not even be the kids. It may be your homies, your, 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 your homegirls, whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? The people in the workplace. They follow your lead. So it's important, man, that you stick up for others. And when you see this, man, can you imagine right now in our society, if this was to happen, a lot of this stuff, man, people that are even trying to hurt other people would stand up for them in those groups, in those workplaces. Hey, man, that ain't good. Nah, don't do that, bro. You ain't gonna do that in front of me. Nah, leave that person alone for real. Friends saying that to each other. Co-workers saying that to, to each other. You understand? Family members saying that to each other. Nah, man, don't do that, man. That ain't the vibes. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna do that, bro. Sticking up for what is right on behalf of others. Why? Because John 15, 12 says, Jesus is speaking. He says this, my commandment is this, love one another as I have loved you. If God has loved you, and you can say, man, God has loved me. You've had tears coming out your eyes. You're like, man, I can't believe how he can love somebody like me. Bam, that's you then. You don't understand how he can love you? Okay, the same love he gives you. He says it right here. He don't tell you to go on an empty tank. He says, because I love you, you know what that's like now. And he says, your cup, it runneth over. He don't just fill it up. It overflows what God has for you. He gives you more than enough. And he says, I've given you all this love. So guess what? Go and distribute that love to other people, even to the people that don't deserve it because yo stanky butt don't deserve it either. See what I'm saying? Facts, bro. Facts. My son says bars. That's bars right there. Not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the word of God says bars. That's a hip hop thing we say. <laughs> oh, you might as well say amen. That's a hip hop way of saying amen. Bars. <laughs> Oh, James 2 1 says, As believers in our Lord Jesus, you must never treat people in different ways because of their outward appearance, right? Last thing here is Colossians um, 3 11 says, In this new life, one's nationality, listen to this, it says, In this new life, one's nationality or race or education or social position is unimportant. Such things mean nothing. Whether a person has Christ is what matters, and he equally is available to all. Colossians 3.11. Facts right here. Bars. You understand what I'm saying? It's straight fire right here. It don't, it don't matter what your nationality is or your race. None of that matters, man. You know what does matter? Listen. It's how God loves us all, man. And he's for every single one of us, man. You understand what I'm saying? Every person Christ died on the cross for. That's the vibes, man. That's it. Don't be riding them other waves out there. Ride the wave that's the wave that Jesus Christ has set for you to ride. You understand? Well, we live this stuff out. The Bible says, don't be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. Man, y'all stand up for others, man. That's what I'm that's what I'll do, and I'm gonna continue to do, and I'm finding ways to do. You do the same thing. God bless you. Love you. Praying for you. Let's pray right now. Father God, we just thank you for what you've done, Lord God, in our hearts, Father God. Um, as you have brought life transformation, or continue to bring life transformation in and through our lives, Father God, mentally and emotionally, Father God. Lord, we ask, Father God, that you would uh, do a new thing in our, in our midst, Father God. Lord, we ask that you would help us to stand up for others. Um, to um, um, be there for those that are hurting and going through things, Father God, that are that are um, dealing with with injustice, Father God. Help us to speak up for those that, as your word says, cannot speak for themselves. 
Help us to ensure justice, Father God, for those that are being crushed according to your word. Help us to speak up for the poor and the helpless. Help us to see that those that are not getting justice to get justice. Help us to do that by our influence, by standing up for others, Lord God. We need you, Lord. Your word declares that we are to be this way. Whoever you are listening to this, whatever influence you have, make sure you use it to speak up for others. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. And we just lift up all the biases, the prejudices, Lord God, the racism to you. And we ask that you do a miracle, Father God, and help each and every one of us that, that deal with this at one point or another. Help us, Father God, to come clean. Help us to leave, leave this at your, your feet, Father God. Help us to repent and turn from those evil ways, those wicked ways, Father God, to where we don't prejudge anyone, Lord God, where we don't believe that our race is superior than anyone else's. Lord, we need you in this. Guide us, direct us, empower us to do so, Lord. May we love others the way you've loved us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. We'll see y'all, man. Yeah.